Hey guys, it's Nick from BonBonsai.com And today I'm going to tell you 7 basic tips for bonsai beginners Now before I begin, uh, I want to tell you about uh, my book If you're interested in learning how to prune, trim, and sculpt your bons bonsai Then go to the link above, which is BonBonsai.com forward slash bonsai book Now, to get on to the 7 basic tips you need to first find the right soil finding the right soil is absolutely like essential now you have to look for mainly three things proper drainage so that you don't drown your uh, bonsai which can create fungus and all that stuff and this might include adding gravel and small rocks to the soil uh, now the problem again uh, this also means that you need to have like holes at the bottom and you don't need to overwater because again this can cause fungus issues and you don't want fungus issues that can spell the end of your bonsai you also need to make sure your soil is uh, aerated so much air can get into it because otherwise you are strangling your bonsai literally it cannot breathe it literally needs air I mean it's the same thing with like a lawn sometimes you need to aerate your lawn it's the same goes for a bonsai just on a, it's a smaller scale now you have inorganic soil which you have things like rock clay um, you know you have a uh, oh man volcanic rock stuff like that these do not withhold nutrients period now organic soil on the other hand it can be things like leaves you know it's organic Mater these materials can withhold nutrients and provide nutrients the problem is that they break down and you got to replace them you know eventually the nutrients goes away you can't just keep the same soil forever you know with all of that in mind the five main components of bonsai soil is akadama a granular clay which actually naturally occurs and is often used in bonsai soil um, well, if you're more interested in learning about it, then make sure you go to Bonsai Empire's post where they actually talk about uh, Akadama uh, with Bonsai experts. It's actually pretty interesting. You have also pumice, which is an extremely porous volcanic rock, which is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, it helps water and nutrients uh, like go. You know, it helps with water flow and all that stuff. Now, lava rock is uh, another volcanic rock, but it's not uh, pumice. Now, that also helps with, like, water flow and all that stuff. Compost provides many nutrients. It's an it's the organic part of the soil mixture. And now, that can widely vary, so make sure you research. Uh, you know, you can't just throw your coffee grinds into your uh, bonsai soil. <laughs> and also, a little rock might actually help. Uh, you, you need to make sure you have little rocks, not huge pieces. It helps with... Uh, the, you know helps with the water going through you know you don't want it to stay in uh, in and, and smother you know you're drowning your roots and it can cause actually fungus issues which I was talking about earlier now you also can't just have gravel because then you don't have any water retention you have no water staying in there it's just gonna go through the pot so it's a mix of a certain balance you have to find now what about watering your bonsai just right? This is extremely important. I've already stressed how important it is because you can underwater it, which will lead to wilted leaves and then eventually death. Or you can overwater, which can lead to drowning it and death. So you have to be in between. You can't just forget about your bonsai. You can't just drown your bonsai. You have to be very careful. Now, if you just stick to a regular schedule, this is not going to be a problem. But it is difficult to do with bonsai trees sometimes. You just need to make sure that um, the topsoil, whether it's dry or it's you know uh, wet, or maybe it is uh, you know maybe it's not compacted because it's not wet. So you need to make sure. Oh, is the topsoil dry? Mm, well, then I need to water a little. It. Now, do not just pour a ton of water in it. You need to do so evenly. 
you pour a ton of water in it, you're putting a lot of water in one section, or you're even damaging how the soil is. You know, you're making a hole, which is not good at all. So use a fine nozzle uh, and spread it evenly. Now, if you don't, you're going to wash out your soil. Uh, make sure you also use some tray to, to catch the excess water because you do need the holes in the bottom of your tray. Don't think you don't need it. You need it. Otherwise, you might, it's going to be easier to underwater, or sorry, put your roots underwater. Not underwater, but put your roots underwater. So if there's a little excess water, it can just go right out. Now, the amount of water needed will depend on like the soil, the type of tree, the humidity in the air, the temperature, the amount of sunlight the, sea, the tree sits in, and a lot more. That's why you need to check the soil instead of relying on a routine. Now, again, a routine can help but you got to be vigilant otherwise your tree can die this is a very some trees are going to be more hardy than others so you got to keep that in mind too can you you know you need to check it once a day twice a day or is it something that you can be like okay i'll check in like three days you know you got to figure out your habits when it comes to bonsai you need to figure them out kind of quick which you can do by research and a little bit of trial and er error so where do you want to position your bonds, your bonsai? This is very critical, but this also includes lighting, humidity of the area, temperature of the location, and more. Find out what tree you have. Find out whether it's an outdoor one, indoor one. Um, some of them are fine outside during part of the year, but then they need to come inside during part of the year. Some of them are fine outside all the year. Some of them cannot be outside in your area. They might need to be inside, and it might need to be inside in a warm part of your area. I mean, uh, and not of your area, in your house. For example, if you have a subtropical tree, then you probably need to make it an indoor bonsai. Um, you know, and maybe it'll be fine during the hotter parts of the year. Who knows? You need to just Google is a whatever your tree species and uh, an outdoor or indoor bonsai. Now, if you put an indoor bonsai outside during the wrong time, you can easily kill it. Uh, some bonsai trees need degrees of shade, uh, and some need to be in the direct sunlight. Some just don't need direct sunlight at all. You just have to be careful. This is where research comes in, and where bonsai empire, uh, the post I've been talking about before, it's an important post. Go look at it. You need to do your research beyond this because I can't list every single tree species with when it comes to every single climate, with every single soil, type of soil. You have to do it yourself. This is a very contextual situation. Now, you cannot, re, you cannot skip repotting. You skip repotting, it's dead. Good job. You cannot skip repotting. Now, it might seem difficult or something that can be skipped, but you only need a little knowledge. That's all you need. You don't need much. You just need a little knowledge. Now, if you decide to not repot your bon bonsai, then, yeah, expect it to probably die. Uh, at the very best, um, if you want to put it in the same pot, you might want to take it out anyways and cut the roots so that it doesn't uh, die. <laughs> now, the roots will grow far too much, causing the death of the tree if you don't repot it. A plant that is too small, uh, in too small of a pot for its roots can become root bound. And that's how you kill your plant. Now the basics of repotting is by having shears, a new pot, new soil, and a root hook. Which you may not have heard of, but make sure you check what a root hook is because it is kind of important. Now since the bonsai ha uh, gets its access to so little soil, you'll want to make sure that you have brand new soil. Uh, that has plenty of nutrients in the tree. Again, the soil will not last forever again check out bonsai empire's uh guide on how to repot it's much more approachable than you think it's not as difficult not as difficult really so feeding your little uh, almost as obvious as watering your bonsai you need to provide it nutrients the water ain't gonna do it alone you have to provide nutrients the main nutrients with the main ingredients to fertilizer or npk nitrogen phosphorus and potassium now, they all have a role to play, and many people have their own preferred mixtures for specific plants during particular parts of the year. Uh, bonsai experts debate. Actually, have debates about this. 
Uh, so some might prefer a higher amount of nitrogen relative to others during spring to foster above ground growth. The safe play and preferred play by many bonsai enthusiasts is just an even 6-6-6 six, six, six split. Uh, remember fertilizer is fertilizer. So you don't necessarily need to get bonsai fertilizer, like specialty bonsai fertilizer. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't. It's just you don't have to. Now, there's some types of fertilizer that you can uh, slowly apply by putting them on the soil and watering them. You know, you have the liquid fertilizer. Uh, some is, you know, stuff you put in the soil, and as you water, it breaks down and it feeds it. There's tons of little different ways to fertilize your uh, plant. It's really like fertilizing any other plant. So if you know how to fertilize plants and you already know what, like, you want and what nitrogen does and what phosphor does phosphorus does and what potassium does then you're safe if not make sure you go study this before you get a bonsai now matching your bonsai and its pot now a tree's growth can be stunted if the person puts it in a smaller area than it, what it needed for its optimal size now you can have a few problems pop up like you become root bound um, but stunting the growth of the tree is exactly how people force trees to be trees I mean, bonsai trees. So it's kind of a, you know, it's like you can't just keep repotting it to something bigger. So you have to keep down the size. Now you want to keep it away uh, from most metal pots as they're toxic to the tree. So stick with ceramic, concrete, plastic, or even porcelain. And I have to wonder if clay is probably fine too. Now, from there, you'll want to choose a pot that reflects how masculine or feminine your bonsai is. This may sound silly, but it actually is not. Do you want it to be, you know, rough looking? Do you want it to be hardy looking? Or uh, is your idea for your fem uh, for your bonsai to be more tr uh, feminine? You know, to be uh, more smooth, more thin, you know, uh, things like that. You know, curvy. Maybe you don't want it so sturdy, but you want it to just bend and go along, you know? So does it have smooth curves, smooth bark, things like that. Now it's important because you want it to look presentable. Now square pots are more masculine, oval or circular pots are more feminine. Now finding the right size for the pot is also important, but don't worry because there's a little trick to it. Uh, look at the bonsai tr bonsai's trunk width right above the soil. That's roughly how deep the pot needs to be. The length of the pot uh, varies with the shape of your pot. Uh, if it's an oval or square, then the length should be around two-thirds of how tall the bonsai is. If it's a circle, then the diameter needs to be about one-third of the height. Once you have the pot in mind, check to see if it has a drainage hole in the bottom. I've stressed the drainage hole in the bottom. Make sure you have a drainage hole in the bottom because it's important for oxidation reasons. You don't want excess water. Now, you want to shape your tree. Part of bonsai is not just taking care of it like a regular flower it is you have a vision and then you make it you make the tree your vision it is an art maybe you don't have a vision but it's a process it's still an artistic process now pruning is the use of shears to trim off what the gardener would consider excess growth whether it be buds flowers branches or leaves if you see some new growth that is creating an unwanted shape snip it you can snip branches away to actually encourage new smaller branches to grow you can also snip away budding leaves to make the tree more compact. Pretty interesting. If you didn't know it, you wouldn't have ever th thought of it, you know? Now, you can use wiring to shape the branches of the tree as well, but you want to be careful, especially when it's dormant, or, or do it when it's dormant, not when it's exactly growing. If you put a tight wire around a branch when it's growing, you'll scar the branch. Don't just put a wire on a branch and forget about it for weeks. You need to be observant. Otherwise, you can easily scar the tree while it's growing the last thing you want to do is pretty much make a blemish you know this is a permanent piece of art well it's, i mean eventually it's going to die but it's semi-permanent it might be more permanent than you know the length uh you might die before the tree dies like that's how long these bonsai trees can live that's just the two main ways pruning and wiring uh Really, that's all beginners need to concern themselves with for now. So those are the seven basic tips. I know it was a little bit of a long video, but if you want to see uh, my article, you can easily just go to Bon Bonsai, and I actually have it up top on my menu about tips for beginners. So this isn't going to be my last video. I'll make more. 
and I'll see you in the next one.